Good morning. I know it's hot, but we can have a little bit more energy this time. I'm going to open us up in prayer as we uh, prepare our hearts to sing to God today. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you brought us here. We thank you for the warm weather. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the ways that you have moved this week. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that you uh, love us in spite of all of our sins, in spite of all the ways that uh, we push you away, you are present, and you love us, and you care. Be with us now. Help us to sing to you with uh, all of our hearts. In your name, amen. Amen. Please stand. Oh, yeah. 
you that you love us, we thank you that you care. We thank you that you are worthy of praise and that you have given us this option to sing to you. Lord, help us remember that you are a holy God and you're the only one that can make a way. Amen. Amen. Amen.
pastor, el pastor. Are you afraid? 
I remember uh, when I was in an evening class, and the professor, who was a visiting professor, uh, was sharing about this thing in Greece that I knew I was going to be going to in about six months. And it was an opportunity to live on a boat in Greece for like two and a half, or a month and a half. And you sailed around and you explored where Paul went. It was super awesome. And I remember as he was talking, sorry about my mic. As he was talking, he said, He said, you say good words. This is God. <laughs> you changed your ringtone. No, I always had that. It's a certain time. I know it's going to be 1 o'clock soon. God is talking. God is talking. Amen. Um, so I'm in class, and I'm so pumped for this trip. Who knows if I'm going to go to Greece and be on the boat? Amen. And all of a sudden, he says, yeah, it's amazing when you're there. You get to go bungee jumping, and my stomach drops. And you get to go cliff jumping, and I just about passed out. <laughs> this is like a big fear of mine. I do not like heights. That's my pastor. That's my pastor. And I knew, like, if I'm spending the money to go to Greece, I'm getting every cent that I paid for. Fear or not. And so for the next three, four months, Fear and this cousin's worry and anxiety kept knocking on my door, and I wanted to invite them in. They would just come in. I'd be having a great time meeting with friends, and then all of a sudden, I would be thinking about, oh man, my impending doom. When I jump off of a cliff into unknown water, oh no, and <laughs> like who knows what's going to happen there. Uh, and then if I survive that, I'm going to bunch of jumping. Like no, this this is. Yeah. The fear would just lurk. It was always present. Something came out. And look, I was sort of even ashamed to say this, but we're talking about emotions, so I feel like I should be vulnerable. There were like other little fears attached to this too, right? And this 18, 19 year old Isaac was like, I'm not too, too confident in how I look, and my legs are like white and hairy and like, <laughs> and then like, this whole time I'm going to be like putting on shorts. I was just wore jeans. Yeah. And I'm going to go back to feeling like all of these fears are popping up too, you know? Yeah. Like, Insecure at some point, you know, maybe maybe not anymore. Maybe you've arrived. Um, yeah. All of these fears are just circling. This impending threat. God. So the day comes, we're in Greece, we're on the boat, it's a cloudy day, and all of a sudden I remember the captain's like, oh yeah, we're coming up on the cliffs, they're right over there. And all of a sudden it seemed like our, our little sailboat was just like flying. It's like, whoa, slow down, I need time to think about this. <laughs> And the cliffs arrive, and everybody jumps off, and I'm videotaping. <laughs> and I'm just paralyzed by fear. Oh, God. We all have fears. Except you. <laughs> we all have fears. We all have those things that feel out of our control, these, these, these fears of an impending threat, of an impending danger. Yeah. Maybe it's the fear of disappointing someone. <clears throat> As the, the summer, as the weather's heating up, there's a fear of violence in our city. You walk down the street, or maybe it's your neighbor who's a gangbanger, and you're like, I'm going to be sitting in my house, yep. and a bullet comes flying through. Yup, yup, amen. Maybe it's financial safety. You're going and you're like, man, no, this is 350 <laughs> That's just brought back under $1.20. They were like over $2. It's like, you're just eating, and you can feel this anxiety inside of you. Maybe it's the, the fear that you're not going to get into the school that you want to get into, or the, the job that you want to get in, and your idea of success, you're afraid, is not going to happen. Amen, 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 amen. Maybe it's a social concern that you're like, one day I am going to be old and lonely. It's okay. And nobody's going to be around. No more children. Or maybe it's a present fear of a conversation you have to have with somebody and you're just trying to avoid it because it feels like it is a threat. We all have fears. And fear focuses our attention upon an impending threat. It's like a microscope that hones in on that threat. And it diminishes. It diminishes our focus on other things. 
I love this quote. I feel like it gives a lot of clarity to fear. It says, fear distorts our perception of ourselves so that we seem weaker than we really are. It distorts the size of our problems so that they seem huge and undefeatable. But perhaps most significantly, fear distorts our picture of God. God seems weak, uninvolved, or uncaring in the midst of our troubles. After all, we think if he were strong and concerned, he would not leave us in this mess. Amen, amen, amen. By making evil seem all conquering. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And as we've been talking about the brain, we've been learning a little bit. And fear, first, is in your, your brain setting. That's sort of fight and flight. You, you, see, you have a fire in the house, and you're like, I gotta go. I don't want to get burned. My car's coming down the wrong way. And you, you, you respond, and fear helps sustain your life, right? Yeah. yeah. So as we've been learning about our family stories and how our brains work, we also know that fears are passed on. The other parts of your brain, the neocortex, and your thinking part comes into, into play as well. The fears are passed on from our families. Fears are part of our stories, things that have happened to us, real things that create real fear that we shouldn't just push away and pretend that it isn't there. So, are we just supposed to not fear? Is fear just like an unchristian thing to do? Yeah. Don't be afraid. Angel shows up and says, fear not. Oh yeah, I'll listen to that. Huh? Or is it that our emotion of fear, which is a God-given emotion, should first and foremost be on the right objects? Is there a fear that brings clarity instead of confusion? Is there a fear that doesn't shout at us to stay away and cower in the corner, but a fear that actually invites us to come close? This morning, I don't want to just explain fear to you. I want us to journey together in search of the right soul. I want us to journey through Scripture and say, who are we to fear? How are we to fear? What does this look like? And why should we fear? So we are going to be doing something. We're going to be reading a lot of Scripture. And I don't want to read all the Scripture this morning. So I'm going to be asking you as we go throughout to volunteer to read scripture. The only rule, yep, I see you. The only rule is that you can only read one scripture. So all the scripture hogs out there, slow down, you can get one scripture. I already right? read. <laughs> but I want us to start in thinking about who to fear. Let's look at Proverbs 9, 10 through 11, and they're all going to be on the screen behind you. Malay, did you want that one? Do you want to read this one? Yeah, yeah you got it. Perfect, yeah, that's But in this moment, I'm like, tell me what I need to do so that I 
don't die. <laughs> because it feels like if I get too close to this, sí, I'm gone. <laughs> Amen. And beloved, we serve a God who created neither of falls. We serve the creator of all things. Yeah. Yes. The creator of all things. The creator of the galaxies. I just heard this past week that they discovered a new black hole in the galaxies. Oh and my I was like, Lord whoa. Jesus. What else? Yeah, they're amazing, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> it's like a hole. It started to explode. It, you, um, it was like a what? It was like a. Basically, like a. Man. It's like a supernova. Great people. It just sucks yeah. everything in. Yeah. yeah. It, nothing comes out. And nothing, nothing comes out, right? Not even, not even, not even, not even, not even the speed of light can um, escape. Yeah. Yep. Man, I'm just glad you're not talking about it because I'm going to the station on the radio. I said, I got the headline, and now I'm just moving on. <laughs> so our God is the God who created the black hole. Our God. He created that. And listen to what the psalmist says. I want somebody to read from his Psalm 33, 8 through 9. You got it. to wisdom and declining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. It's the Proverbs 2, 1 through 5. Amen. So as you're reading them, are there things that stand out that say, hey, how are we supposed to understand the fear of the Lord? Are there things Go back to the, the previous. Are there things that stand out that this verse can help us know this is how we might understand the fear of the Lord? His heart, his insight, the insight, uh, um, his hidden treasures, search for it, his words, and his Yeah, there's a lot of verbs in yeah. there. Yeah, 
Look, if you receive my words, it's treasure of my commandments. If, if you make your ear attentive, if you will call out. And at the end it says, if you seek it like silver and search for it, search for it like hidden treasure. Hallelujah! And I felt that invitation this week of Isaac, you might not be where you want to be, but you can start seeking and start searching because we all are seeking and searching. Amen! Praise and God! All Go back! Go back! We're looking for things. <laughs> and often things that can alleviate our fears. Our fears that bring confusion and distraction. We're searching for ways to avoid someone that we're afraid of. And you know what? Maybe I'll just keep watching this. Well, we're searching for ways to make sure that we don't fall into financial ruin. I'm just going to shit at work all the time. Or this is going to be how I achieve my success. And we're searching to make sure that that fear doesn't become a reality. Amen. Jesus talked about some of our worries and anxieties when it comes to provision and prestige. And, and he said this towards the end of, end of it in Matthew 6. You know, you this oh. One. Out of, fear, out of fear, seek the Lord and his ways. 32. For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteous. And these things will be added to you. Matthew. Amen. 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 Great job. All right. You've got to have a right thing that you're seeking. Yeah. You've got to look for him. You gotta, you gotta seek something first, and it's God in right. His ways. Man, for those of you who are here at the, the Lord's baptism, when I lost my ring and I had yes. to look for it, right? And I was saying, like, this is how God seeks us out. Yeah. Like, I gotta find my way. If I don't find this, like, there are problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the intent is to search you for the fear of the Lord. God. God, I need to know. I need to, to know what you're asking of me. If I don't know what you're requiring of me, I'm lost. Yep. If I don't know you, I'm out to sea. Yup, yup. Go, Pastor. Preach it. That's right. So I wonder what we can do to see the Lord. Very dangerous. I wonder if there, there are things that we can do. Right? First, we saw in the Proverbs verse, seek the scriptures. Dig into the word of God. Right? It's not enough just on a Sunday morning to dig in and be hungry in the world. Like, God, I need you to teach me in here. God, I, if you're not speaking to me, I'm not going to know how to speak the Lord. Amen. Amen. Secondly, I want us to, to hone in on nature. Right? Previous to the, the verse that you read, Billy, yes, sir. Jesus is talking and he's saying, like, don't be anxious about your your food and what you eat or your clothing. And he tells them, he says, look at the birds of the air. The verse isn't out there. Um, he said, look at the birds of the air. Consider the lilies of the field. And literally, it's like this observe, fix it. Right. Examine closely. And all the times we talk about it, and we immediately move on to like, and what he means by this is that if he's providing for them, then he'll provide for you, which is true. Amen. But I wonder if Jesus were with us, if he would say, hold up, actually what I said was look at the nature around you. Right. Like, I gave you the explanation, yes, but I want you to skip the step of slowing down. Right. So I brought Emily's bird, I asked him, I said, hey, can I bring your bird? Maybe <laughs> this is broken in several places. Oh. Um, <laughs> But if you've been around here all, you know that my family, we grew up bird watchers, birding's like a big thing. My dad sent me pictures <laughs> of an Oriole building a nest. Oh. But I am so grateful because there's something about like watching a bird all different times of the year, singing, doing its thing. Which can teach us about the Lord God. Right. Teach us the fear of the Lord. Man, if they're making it and they're singing outside, it's going to be all right. Builders. We're going to get through the winter. We're going to get through the summer. <laughs> right? If that bird's finding a way to eat, they find a way to hide. Find a way. Uh -huh. Take care of or you look at the flowers. Oh, they got the flowers. Oh, 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 praise God, he, he takes care of us better than I take care of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> They're already starting to wilt. But you don't have a flower in your hand. Yes. Yeah, take a look at them. God says, if I can dress the flowers like that, you absolutely can keep them. Yeah. <laughs> if, I can, if I can make the flower look that good, 
Why are you stressing about what you're wearing? Why are you concerned? I've got you. Amen. Praise and God. So now we look around. I mean, even the dandelions. Look, the boys love dandelions, and I don't love dandelions, but Why they're shifting my because they're bad in are my mind. Bad? See, this is why kids are so refreshing. They're just like, this is beautiful. And they're blowing their seeds everywhere. And I'm like, I'm going to have a million dandelions. Puppies or cats? Mm. Bubbles. Bubbles. <laughs> Good question. Slow down. Look at the nature around you. Maybe when you're at home and you can't see nature outside, turn on a discovery channel. Right? Watch how God takes care of the animals. Seek the Lord in His ways. And next I'm going to look at Psalm 34. Who wants to read Psalm 34? Someone from this side. Psalms, um, okay. Because of the children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days, that he may see the good? Keep your tongue from evil and turn your lips from speaking to see. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace. Man, man. I love this. It's literally just telling us, like, hey, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And in a previous verse, it said this too. Like, if you desire a long life, if you want a lot of days, which I think gets to a real fear for a lot of us, of like, man, that, that, that harm will befall us, cut us short early on in life. It says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking. Uh, See, turn away from evil and do good. So How are we to fear? We turn from evil and do good. And if you have a heart that says, I want to fear you right now, I want to have the, the right sort of fear, then don't be going to do an evil and saying, like, and I want to do this, Lord. Because he's going to give you, if that's what you want to do, not well give to you're you. not going to be learning about the fear of the Lord All right. when you're living in the fear of the world. Yep, yep. I got it. Instead of conniving how you can make a little extra money for that new toy, devote time and energy to how you can bless someone else. Say, I'm going to turn from this. I'm going to seek things. I'm going to seek good. Instead of gazing upon the the feast of violence and anger and any given show, turn on the Discovery Channel. Right? Come on.
The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Provision, protection, and the last one, to keep it with the, 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 the P's, I have participation. Oh, all right. What's wrong with him? Got three verses here. <laughs> Who wants the first one? Provision. Evelyn, and Joe, you're next. Joe. The friendship of the Lord is those who fear him. And he made his covenant. Great job. Look at this. God doesn't just want us to shirk back and fear. It says the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. He is amazing. He is awesome. He is loving. He wants to invite us in. Joel, Psalm 147. For the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Mm -hmm. Man, love. Yeah. Because of his reverence, which is another word for godly fear. 
I love you. So here's the story, right? Jesus, who's about to die. Why is he about to die? Because he's about to take on our sin. Everything that should make us cower is here for God all. because he's holy and he's perfect. Mighty God, Holy Name, God. Father. Because he's holy and perfect. As Jesus is approaching that, he has a fear. Yeah. God, I don't want to do this. Hallelujah. But he has a bigger and he has a better fear. So like, I don't, I don't want to do this, but I know your ways are better. I know you are better. So he's crying out and he's hurt. Yes, Lord. Why? Because of his reverence. Hallelujah. Because of his Praise reverence. God. Because you know why? He had a, a fear of God. So God, I want, to, I want you more than anything else. I want to love you more than anything else. Father, I will follow you more than anything else. To save you. So um, when we experience sin and the effects of sin, Jesus has experienced it. He knows the gravity of the situation. He knows the war that we're in. He knows what we're facing. Yeah. I mean, he knows it. And it's only because of the work of Christ, the love of God, the fact that he is awesome. He is big enough to deal with sin. Amen. We can't. And he is loving. He is taking that on upon himself. Shift it. Oh, the death of Jesus okay. is the Got loudest it. proclamation of the glory of God. He <laughs> says, I am worthy of your love and desires of your love. Fear. Fear. Mm -hmm. He's awesome and Got he's it. loving. Fearing not meaning that we cower away from God. So he doesn't want us in his presence. But a fear is that you are awesome and you are loving. And I'm coming in the way that you tell me to come. In the same way that if you want to go down below Niagara Falls, you follow the path. You don't go just any which way that you want. You follow the path. You see, you want to come to this, you experience holiness. How do you come to the person of Jesus Christ? The person of Jesus Christ. It's so I want to close in just talking about what this might practically look like in our lives. <coughs> when fear comes knocking on our doors and entering our thoughts and making themselves at home, what can we do when anxiety grips our body, when we're tensing up? Anxiety will serve like a, a maintenance required light on your car. That says, like, hey, look, you got to take care of something. You don't just ignore it like I've done with my car. <laughs> you call me and you say, God, they're trying to tell me something about something that's going on in my body, in my story. First is we need to acknowledge our fears. Yeah. Like it's not sinful to have fears. Yep. No, it ain't. And there's a lot of reasons why you have fears. No, we ain't no perfect. Acknowledge them. Be curious about them. why. Why am I afraid of this? As we've been talking about our soldiers and our families, like, what, what, why do I have this fear? There's a lot of things that go with fear. Be in tune to your body, and in so doing, tune into the Lord of your body, the Lord of our hopes, and you say, God, teach you. Why do I have this? God, help me to give this to you and have a bigger and better fear of you. I gave out the, the bucket sheets. Yeah. Just one more. This is just a tool to help us say, what would it look like to be kind to ourselves in that moment rather than just saying, I shouldn't be afraid, no. and moving on and you just Skype it, and then it pops up in other unhealthy ways. Yeah, not a But to say, okay, let me, let me focus in on this. Mm. And you'll notice there's lots of different ideas, and you're not meant to do all of these all of the time, and so it might not be helpful at all. And this doesn't mean that we're just like all these different things separately, spiritual, physical, like this is who we are as people. So maybe you say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to first and foremost breathe. Like the, the benefits of just taking deep breaths, five seconds in, pull, five seconds out, you're like, Isaac, he's like, really, he's out there. Like, in it, in it, in it. <laughs> That's how bad the... <laughs> Literally brings calm to your body. Yeah, right. Washing the dishes. 
I was thinking about this last night. I love washing the dishes. But warm water helps bring calm to your body. Maybe it's talking with someone else and talking to them. Hey, I'm really afraid of this. Help me think through the worst possible scenario. Let me actually think about what it is I'm afraid of. <laughs> or doing something you love, singing a song, playing music, gardening, looking at plants and flowers, meditating on scriptures, and you know what? I'm going to hone in on this verse. I'm going to be thinking about it. I'm going to be allowing this to, to shape my thoughts or listening to my favorite worship song. Just some ideas on that. Acknowledge your views. Secondly, acknowledge your agency. What do I mean by that? Fear tends to make you think like there's nothing I can do. And you can. Yeah, yeah. Amen. In that moment yep. when I was yep. on the boat, it became one of That's the most powerful trolling. moments of my life because I handed my camcorder to somebody else. I said some things that I will not repeat in the sermon up here because they're not <laughs> the most godly. But I think they were extremely helpful in having me face my fears. And I jumped off the boat and went up on the cliff and I jumped off the cliff. Oh. And I looked back at that as a, as a changing moment in my life. Yes. Because I said, no, I can't do this. I knew. This wasn't like a, I, you know, I make a shot. I knew the Lord wanted me to. I knew he was asking me in this moment, like, Isaac, I've got you. Yeah. I want you to live your life this way. Yeah. Yeah. And it changed. Because there have been other moments in my life where I mean this, I can't do this. We have an agency. I love you, well, Father me, God! Yes, I want to say oh, Jesus. You might need help from medication. Or a counselor. I'm not medication, I'm tired of that. And that is okay. That's not something to be ashamed of. I don't struggle with severe anxiety. But some of you do, and you might need mental help, and that is okay. That's not like a second tier Christian, okay? Yeah. You're not like a lesser Christian if Come you need on. to get help from a counselor. Yeah. I praise God that he's free to raise uh, for us that's to my be able to help yeah. ourselves not to be yeah. If that's what you need, that is okay. Amen, amen. Would you stand with me as you go? Okay. Our God is awesome. Always. He's loving. Always. His perfect love is laid in the person of his son. Cash out for you. Amen. Now I'm going to speak what the psalmist says in Psalm 27. It says, The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Hallelujah. When the army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. Hallelujah. I ask from the Lord, and this only do I see, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. All the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Father, we love you. are grateful that you are our God. You are awesome. You are the creator. God, you are bigger than we could ever imagine. And yet you draw closer than we could ever name. imagine. You invite us to do the same. You invite us to say, I want you to know how much I care about you. You already know all of our fears, God. You Hallelujah! Want to bring peace, you want to bring wholeness to us, God. I pray for each one of us, Lord, that you would help us. <coughs> I pray that you would help us to fear you rightly, God. To experience the benefits. Excuse me. <laughs> Lord, we love you. We ask that you help us to go for the Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Spirit. God, to the praise and the glory, praise and glory of the Father. In the precious name of Jesus. And all God's people said this morning. Amen. 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 Be blessed, church. Thank you.
Adria. Adria.